Hello everybody and welcome back to our lecture series. I am Ted, your host, and this is going to be part five of our lecture series uh, uh, in, our, in our discussion on World War II. And before we begin our lecture proper, I would like to get to our customary recap and just touch bases on some of the things that we covered in our last lecture. So in our last lecture, um, we spoke about the war in the Pacific, the Pacific theater of war. Um, we, we outlined the early Japanese success. We spoke of how um, early, uh, not early, but late 1941, early 1942, uh, saw a string of military defeats for the United States, uh, beginning, um, uh, most people consider Pearl Harbor a battle and a battle lost uh, by the United States. Um, but but, but uh, moving on from Pearl Harbor was the attack on uh, Clark Field in the Philippines uh, in which the majority of the United States Air Fleet was destroyed within minutes. Um, no lessons, no precautions have been taken after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Um, you can chalk that up to overconfidence or um, racist assumptions that they just didn't need to make these sort of some uh these these sort of uh precautions to fight the japanese uh but in any event the japanese quickly overwhelmed the united states forces stationed in the philippines uh the philippines had been the um uh the uh the place where the united states had bulked up um, the, from the american perspective the philippines were thought to be the first target of japan in the pacific Namely because the Philippines was the closest to Japan. So many thought that the Japanese would simply strike there and the United States forces would hold them, uh, would hold them in the Philippines and then support would come from Pearl Harbor. Um, the battleships along with uh, soldiers to fight on the ground, sailors to fight at sea, the submarine fleet would move, uh, would, was, uh, was stationed at varying degrees from um, the the, uh, the the submarine fleet and the uh, air fleet, um, the, the carrier ships, they were all stationed at various degrees from the Philippines and uh, those three components, the submarine, the, uh, the battleships and the carrier fleets would all move in to support and reinforce the, the Philippines and additional aid would come from uh, naval stations and army bases on the Pacific coast. Um, the Philippines, uh, with the attack on Pearl Harbor, there would be no reinforcement, no aid coming from Pearl Harbor. Um, so the uh, the Philippines was quickly overrun. It was quickly uh, conquered by the Japanese. Uh, and in their in their uh, victory, the, the Japanese marched um, the American survivors of the attack on of the invasion of the Philippines. It will became known as the Bataan Death March. Um, marching them, and when they fell out, uh, the soldier when the soldier fell out on this 60-mile trek, they were either bayoneted to death or shot to death, uh, and just left on the side of the road. Uh, it let it made for a grisly sight for those coming up in the um, uh, coming up in the uh, in the reserves, not the reserves, but in the um, what would you call it uh, in the rear of the of those who marched. Um, you can imagine someone at the head of the column falling out and being bayoneted uh, or shot and the men in the um, in the following columns simply seeing that and knowing that that's the fate that awaited them should they fall out. It's a very harrowing experience. Um, and and from, the, uh, from the Philippines, uh, uh, for, from, uh, from the things, uh, things, things simply went even worse. Um, one of the uh, more polarizing moments of the, uh, of the um, of uh, 1942 of uh, the Japanese invasion of the Philippines was the retreat of General Douglas MacArthur and MacArthur's uh, sweeping declaration that he shall return um, for, from this retreat. Uh, it became one of the um, the most uh, heavily propagandized events of the, of the war. A lot was made of it. Um, and, and of course, uh, in the wake of Pearl Harbor, Hitler, Hitler declared war on the United States, linking um, for the first time a what would have really been re a series of regional wars into a, uh, a, a semi-unified global struggle. Um, the United States would now be at war with uh, Imperial Japan, but also Nazi Germany, and in a little while, Fascist Italy. Um, and, uh, and, and early on, early on, uh, the, the question of how best and, and who was the, the major threat uh, was answered early on with both uh, Roosevelt and 
um, and uh, and Churchill rightly assuming that the the Germans well, Nazi Germany would be the bigger threat to them uh, and deciding on a policy that became known as Germany first but they did not um, devote any ground troops to this attack which enabled the um, the Germans and the Soviet the Germans to continue to put overwhelming pressure on the Soviets in an effort to knock the Soviets out of contention um, the uh, the Americans and the British the, the British Royal Air Force and the United States Army Air Force um, instead of uh, launching ground troops they simply began a bombing campaign a campaign that was designed to to um, deliver punishing blows to German industrial capacities to, to knock out the Germans ability to create tools of war um, while, at the, uh, while at the same time they began to stockpile military arms and equipment that would later be used for the uh, eventual invasion of, of France and the attack on Germany from the West um, and it is at that point that we uh, that we left off and it's at that point that we shall resume our, our lectures uh, so Roosevelt and Churchill's uh, Christmas time agreement to focus on the defeat of Hitler were from Stalin's point of view highly preferable because the Russians were uh, facing virtually the entire weight of the German army that was bearing down on them. Uh, the great battles at Moscow, Leningrad, Stalingrad bear witness to, uh, to, to, um, to the viciousness and the, uh, and the sheer number of forces that were devoted to this eastern campaign. Now the Western Allies did not hurry to engage the Germans on the Western Front. Um, action was delayed from the summer of 1941 when the Germans invaded uh, until the uh, when the Germans invaded Russia until the summer of 1944 and the intervening uh, years the Russians had to go it alone facing the Germans uh, the United States did uh, send land at least aid to the Russians on Arctic convoys and the convoys would sail across the North Atlantic to Arctic ports of the Soviet Union and it was a very difficult convoy run in these icy waters and uh, it resulted in the interesting sight of the Red Army, the Soviet Army, advancing towards Germany, advancing towards in, into Germany, towards Berlin, using Dodge trucks and eating packaged uh, army surplus food, um, stuff like Spam. Uh, now the reason Churchill and Roosevelt had been so keen to move so slow against the Germans in the West was that until quite recently, the Nazis and the Soviets have been allies. Uh, uneasy allies, but allies nonetheless. The Nazi-Soviet pact had, the, uh, had been the amazement of the world, uh, and it was a fear of Churchill's that the two would drift back into an alliance. Just as the world was amazed by the Nazi-Soviet pact, so too were the allies, uh, were, the, were the Nazis amazed by the alliance between the United States the United Kingdom and the Soviet Union. It was a complete surprise. Hitler, for one, held out hope until the very end that the alliance between a republic, a monarchy, and a Marxist dictatorship would break down, allowing him to uh, exploit it, uh, allowing him to exploit those divisions. Um, Roosevelt differed uh, from his contemporaries in that he was generally uninterested in the day-to-day -day military affairs of the war. Uh, and this is sharply contrasted with a man like Churchill, but with men, I should say, like Churchill and Hitler, Stalin, uh, Mussolini to a lesser extent, uh, who were obsessed with the details um, of their militaries, uh, intervening at times on minute details. Roosevelt was aloof. Uh, what, what, um, and, and left uh, the senior admirals and generals alone to strategize uh, the war effort while he focused on the larger picture to him. Um, he, he alone, uh, he alone sort of uh, stands, stands uh, uh, apart from, from this and sort of uh, provides a, a greater detail of like later military leaders um, such as uh, Bush, uh, such as Reagan and Carter, Bush Sr., Nixon, uh, Clinton, Bush Jr., Obama, 
Um, and I, I guess uh, we can throw Trump into there. Uh, I don't think he has a lot of dates. I don't think any of those men had uh, a lot of day today. I want this done. I want that. And I think it was more along the lines so of let their um, let, let 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 their senior military officials uh, advocate a policy and to simply um, back them in their policy. Uh, now, uh, uh, now the um, the interesting insight that that the uh, that Roosevelt's um, approach to to wartime leadership um, let uh, o opens up for opinions on leadership roles um, between these leaders. Uh, the plan to immediately invade Germany would have been a tough one. Uh, after the Nazi conquest of France, they began to immediately fortify, fortify their, their, their new possession to protect it from seaborne attacks. Uh, from the Dutch coast all the way down to uh, the Franco-Spanish border, uh, the Germans erected all of these um, coastal fortifications. Uh, as early as, um, in early 1942, there was a raid conducted, a very early raid conducted, uh, that resulted in, in a complete failure had the German defensive proved to be very, very good. Um, the little experiment persuaded Roosevelt and Churchill to hold off on attacking in the West with, uh, with troops on the ground un until they had greater numbers of troops to, to throw toward the defenses. Um, in the wake of the defeat, they decided to concentrate on air campaigns against major German industrial centers. Now, the entire German economy was tied up into the war effort, similar to the American and the British economies. Um, the plan was to destroy the factories where German munitions were being made to bring the war to a halt. Now, while the, uh, the terror of an aerial bombing would induce the civilian population to turn against the German uh, Nazi regime, and against the war. Huge resources were devoted to the campaign, which became highly structured and organized as the British took to flying, uh, the British and the Commonwealth, I should say, took to flying in night raids and the Americans took to flying during day raids. And huge numbers of planes, uh, mainly flying fortresses, were shot down by German air defense and fighter planes. The theory at the time was that these planes were, were too fortified. They, they, they were too soundly made to ever be shot down. Uh, they, would defend, um, they, 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 they could not defend themselves against the fighter planes. The reality was that the fighters were too fast for the bombers and far, uh, and far more of the bombers were lost in these aerial sorties, in these, in these aerial battles. Now, the air campaign proved to be far less decisive than hoped for. Far from bringing the enemy population, far from bringing the German population to heel, the raids strengthened the resolve of the local Germans to resist the war, uh, to, to resist their attackers at all costs. Uh, the, British, the British really should have known this because the German bombing campaign known as the Blitz had the same effect on them. In 1940, when German bombs were raining down on London, the British were not compelled to surrender, but rather they resolved to persevere. Uh, the German civilians became more determined to sacrifice and work hard for the war effort um, as a result of this, uh, this, this Anglo-American bombing campaign. Um, the Germans became very adept at minimizing damage to their war effort by dispersing industry rather than concentrating it in large cities. Uh, the Germans devolved a lot of industry into the countryside. The bomber planes were very powerful and the bombs were certainly destructive, but they were not accurate enough to accurately pinpoint destroy a target. Uh, the full scope of these bombings was not the targeting of a specific building or structure, but rather area bombing. Uh, and, and that resulted in the destruction of everything in that area. Now, the bombers were flying in from the United Kingdom. Um, those who were flying in, uh, and, and they were flying in from bases in the United Kingdom, and they, they became tempted to drop their bombs a little short of the target zone. And the second wave of bombers would be dropping their bombs uh, a little early as well, and the third, and so on. This phenomenon became known as creep back. Uh, now, the raids, 
were nonetheless highly affected with a number of firestorms being created in the wake of these bombings. Now, of these firestorms, uh, one one looms large, and that is the, uh, the the firestorm that raised in Hamburg in 1943. Uh, and this was accomplished by the use of high explosive bombs, which destroyed buildings, and then incendiary bombs, which destroyed the wreckage. Now, the bombings went on for several days, um, and it really had the effect of, uh, of trapping emergency rescue personnel in the raids. Tragically, approximately 50,000 people were killed in the Hamburg raids alone, in, in, the, bombing of, uh, in the bombing campaign of Hamburg. And in what was a running theme, the Allies attacked on... Uh, uh, and, and what became a, a running theme, the Allies' attacks on Germans, uh, on, on Germany, highlighted um, hi highlighted the uh, the sort of antipathy that had that had uh, evolved, that had come into being between uh, the two nations. Um, and, and the attack on Dresden really sort of exemplifies this the best. Um, uh, at, at Dresden, there was no uh, strategic or military uh, importance. Um, and because there wasn't any strategic or military importance in Dresden, it became a premier destination for refugees escaping previous bombing raids. Now, the novel Slaughterhouse Five described in horrifying detail from the perspective of, of American soldiers on the ground um, the uh, the, um, the the attack on, on Dresden. Uh, and, and Dresden remains one of the more controversial, the bombing campaign in Dresden remains one of the more controversial uh, acts of the war by the Allied powers. Now, the, uh, the North Atlantic was another highly contested zone between Allies and Axis powers. Uh, had the shipping routes drew more and more attention. Uh, they became the, um, uh, the British and the, uh, and the Russian chief means of acquiring foodstuffs and munitions from the United States. During the war, the Allies uh, analysts broke the codes of the Germans in 1940. The Enigma Code um, was broken, but it was not a major factor on the war effort. The Allies remained in 1940 militarily inferior to the Nazi Germans. Um, and and, not, a, and not, really a serious, uh, not really a serious threat. Um, the Allies' advantage would come when they gained the upper hand, uh, the upper hand militarily. Uh, the Trident Code, which was used for the uh, the submarines, was broken in 1943, and this allowed for the British and American fleets to attack the submarines um, and their resupply ships with startling success. Now, the code breaking also led to a very interesting ethical dilemma. The Allies could not give away they had broken the codes, otherwise the Germans would have become suspicious and changed their codes immediately. Now, this led to situations where the Americans and the British had to sit on information and not act. Uh, the first major clash, uh, and, and now jumping on to North Africa, uh, the first major clash, between American and German troops in the Second World War was in North Africa. Uh, the Italians under Benito Mussolini had embarked on a new round of imperial conquest. Uh, they attempted to conquer North Africa but were thwarted by the British, um, the British and Commonwealth nations. The Germans sent uh, support under General Rommel, who himself was defeated at El Alamein in 1942. Now, though the Allies had won battles before, they were merely holding victories like the Battle of Britain. El Alamein was a victory that pushed the Germans and the Italians back into retreat. Uh, just after El Alamein, uh, an American expeditionary force was sent to West Africa. Uh, this force was moving in conjunction with uh, British Commonwealth forces in North Africa and forced the Italians and the Germans to evacuate North Africa altogether. The next significant campaign in Europe was the Anglo-American invasion of Sicily. Now, the invasion was meant to knock Italy out of the war, and it was mistakenly thought to be an easy target. Uh, Italy was not as militarily strong as Germany, but it was not without tough uh, defensive structures. Monte Cassino, uh, 
where uh, Germans held the invader for a protected, uh, a, a, a protracted, sorry, amount of time, uh, Salerno and Anzio, where the Italians frustrated the uh, Allied actions, helped dash the original plan. They, they proved that the, um, the Italian campaign would not be an easy campaign. Now, the second front uh, began in June of 1944 with the D-Day invasion under the White D. Eisenhower. Um, Eisenhower opted not to invade France uh, from the United Kingdom at Calais, um, which was the nearest point between the two, but from Normandy, which required a longer sea crossing and the possibility of surprising the Germans, which it did. Uh, the Germans were in the dark regarding the planned assault until it was too late. Uh, and then and the night before, the night before the attack, troops parachuted behind uh, enemy lines and destroyed crucial passes like bridges to ensure that the Germans could not bring up tanks to support the defenders on the beaches of Normandy. Now, the attack on D-Day began with a combined naval uh, and aerial bombardment followed by a heavy landing of infantrymen on the beaches. Now, the landings, despite the bombardments, were arduous. Um, the landing at Omaha Beach was particularly difficult. Uh, the film, Saving Private Ryan, uh, really does a very good job at depicting the chaos and the violence associated with the amphibious invasion. Uh, the, the tremendous amount of casualties and the awesome destructive powers of these new tools of war were really on display. Uh, and that, that film um, does, does a pretty good job at, at, uh, at highlighting, at recreating uh, what, what it would have been like on, uh, on, on the beaches that, that day. Um, and with that, we'll break. We'll end uh, part five and we'll come up with part six. As always, I'm Ted. Hit like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you thought about this lecture. And I'll see you guys next time.